press play on this, <clears throat> and uh, this will get us going then. So this um, this is starting, possibly, maybe, the uh, the brand new era, the Hangout, where I don't actually have to do anything, which is nice. <laughs> and um, we'll just have something on in the background um, on this occasion. It is the very first episode of Games Master. Oh, um, of course, yes. Yeah, so I thought that'd be fun. We don't necessarily have to pay attention to it, uh, but we can do. Um, I just thought it'd be a nice time capsule, considering that mm. most of what we do, whether it's on the Hangout or the Reviews and Retrospectives, is kind of wax lyrically about our nostalgia. And um, and uh, this, this will I've be... I've never known us to do that once. <laughs> <laughs> am, I, am I talking to the same person? That doesn't sound like me at all. <laughs> I'm very forward-thinking. Never look back. I'm like a shark. Keep on swimming. <laughs> Futurama, that, isn't it? Um, 80s guy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm proud to be a shepherd of this herd of sharks. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, a, a new um, a new kind of uh, vision for what the Hangout may be going forward, but we'll see. Um, the entire point you is... You didn't tell me this show starred um, the guy from Disney's Atlantis, Search for the Lost Empire. Oh, my God, that's an amazing show. Yeah. I think that's more damning, though, on... Atlantis than it is the early nineties. I think what, what <laughs> who knows? Um, who even uh, remembers Atlantis? Did was you ever Milo? Um, I don't know. Did you ever see uh, much Games Master when you were a kid? Uh, not a single episode. Oh. I don't even know if I was peripherally aware of it. Oh, okay. That's amazing. Um, so, well, I mean, I'll, I'll do a bit of a reviews and retrospective Ooh. summary of it, um, just to kick us off. So, Games Master is a British television program. Originally aired on Channel 4 from 1992 to 1998. Um, it actually returned last year as a new series on YouTube and E4. The first UK television programme dedicated to video games. Dominic Diamond, the floppy-haired guy that we've just seen, was the host for six of the original seven series. And amateur astronomer Sir Patrick Moore featured as the Games Master. Of course, yeah, I yeah. see it now. With yeah. that, it's Oliphant. I didn't recognise him. <laughs> uh, in the new series, it's Trevor McDonald, which is just a phenomenal line of consistency mm. there, because they both do have the same vibe about them. Um, so yeah, the, the show's format consists of a mixture of game reviews, small features, tips, and challenges. And uh, they had a lot of celebrities and basically kids. And it's just got that... I mean, so this is from 1992. So mm. it's got that amazing vibe of, um, you know, when, when they were just like, this was supposed to be the, the coolest of all things. You talk to 11-year-old kids and use words like yeah, tubular and radical Bodacious. And bodacious. And, um, yeah, challenge them. I think this is... I mean, are they? is it like a Super Mario Bros. 3 challenge that they're about to do, I think? Looks so, like it. Mm, so, um, yeah, just... It, it kind of... Um, on the line that... I was talking last year about um, Console Wars, which focused on the Sega versus Nintendo. And this has mm. got very much a, a Sega-styled, you know, Sonic the Hedgehog cool vibe that it's going for. <laughs> they're aiming towards the kids. So, um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm looking forward, even if it's... Um, kind of half-hearted in the background to 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 watching these and um, just just getting that glimpse and mm, fair uh, enough. yeah. While well, we're chatting about there random bits and pieces, three strikes counting against this. Uh, probably why I never watched it was one. It's not a cartoon. Mm. Uh, this is me as a, a child, so <laughs> rather than a thirty-four-year-old man. <laughs> exactly, that still sort of counts. You know, hentai is, is king of content. Uh, <laughs> second of all, it was on one of the mainstream channels rather than one of the the kid-centric networks, yeah. the Colonial Cartoon Network, Fox Kids, yada yada yada. And third, it looks like it's mostly focused on sort of the Sega thing, and I was more of a PlayStation kid. And I suppose also as a, a fourth one, I would rather have been playing the game mm. rather than watching other people doing it, because, you know, I was one of those impatient kids that didn't like to watch other people playing games. Um, and I didn't even really watch review shows. It was always a case of, it's completely the opposite now, where I'm all about hearing other people's viewpoints. But as a kid... I didn't want to listen to people talking about a thing. I wanted to watch it and experience it. Mm. I didn't even watch an episode of the Jonathan Ross show until the Spider-Man 3 special. Oh, really? Um, That's very interesting. Yeah, my, my girlfriend at the time uh, was a big fan of Jonathan Ross, and she was like, oh, no, it'll be great. He'll be on there. And, yeah, I begrudgingly watched it, only because it was going to be um, Toby and Kristen Dunstan, uh, Kristen Dunstan Co. Um, 
didn't care for it. <laughs> Put me right off. <laughs> That's you to a T. <laughs> I got into the Graham Norton show. That that was snarky good fun. Mm. And he got the the guest drunk, which was always a plus. But um, yeah, it, it took me years and years and years to, to get to a point where I'd be watching content like this for enjoyment. Mm. Well, I mean, um, uh, yeah, I can appreciate that about Jonathan Ross. Jonathan Ross was very hit and miss um, mm. at the best of times, I guess. Um, yeah, I mean, we can all agree that his stellar term with... Um, Russell Brand against Andrew Sachs was absolutely inspired. Never has he been funnier or more on point or completely in flow with the tune of the nation. I can't remember that. It's when he phoned up Manuel from Funky oh, Towers. Oh, right, yeah, of course. And they, they joked about the fact that he'd slept with his daughter uh, or granddaughter and mm. then they phoned him back to make a, a f- series of follow-up bad taste jokes. Mm, that's and right. I got him kicked off the BBC for a while. Yes, of course. Mm. I remember now. Did, didn't he die not long after that as well? Which just kind Jonathan of... Ross or Andrew Sachs? Andrew Sachs. I'm not too sure. He did. Well, that, that just kind of added salt in the wounds of, like, uh, mm. you know, <laughs> this man was on his deathbed. <laughs> yeah, and you thing. phoned him back twice. <laughs> 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 um... Yeah, I, I mean, to be honest, there was there was a novelty about Games Master because, um, uh, to me, back then these uh, video games were still incredibly niche. I mean, you mm. think how accessible, how yeah, exactly. You think how prevalent they are now. I mean, video games are everywhere, and uh, it's, it's it's I imagine today's kids won't really be able to appreciate that. Um, back in the well, I mean, even even when we were teenagers, you know, video games were still very much seen as a um, as a niche dweeby thing that you kind mm. of fell out of when you reached a certain age, wasn't it? Um, it was Call of Duty 4, Modern Warfare, that sort of bust that bubble wide open, didn't definitely, it? Definitely, definitely. Mm. Yeah, that kind of brought it into the mainstream for adults, um, 100%. Yeah, it's only, um, I mean, when was that? Like uh, 14, 13, 14 years ago, something? Uh, 2008, 6, mm. 5, 4? Yeah, yeah. It had its 20- not too long ago and they made an absolute hash of it by removing all the content that had been free for the last 10 years or so and then separating it and then charging it at a full game price to get the, the DLC. Mm, that's it right. was an absolute... Wait, are they Ubisoft? Um, I think they're Ubisoft. No, they're uh, Activision. Oh, they're Call Activision, yeah. Call it was an absolute Activision, Activision clusterfuck of uh, PR nightmares but it's not stopped them since. It's what they do. Mm. Yeah. Pretty much. Anyway, um, happy New Year, Matt. We we haven't said that happy on the show. This is um, our first show back since the New Year. We did um, Tokyo Godfathers, the reviews and retrospectives in that little limbo period between Christmas and <laughs> and the New Year, which was uh, a lot of good fun. Really enjoyed doing a lot that. of good fun. I was so tired. <laughs> <laughs> Even now, I've not listened back to it yet, but I'm just for the pure scientific curiosity. I'm going to have to so I can listen to. It just how it came off, but uh, I I don't feel particularly positive about that one. But you seem to be having a good time, so I'm sure it came off very well. Yeah, I I think as we were saying at the time, it's just a shame that um, circumstances had transpired as they did, and and that was one that I felt I uh, could have, you know, we, we would have been able to do another hour on. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, you know, it is what it is. I'd, when you look at our viewing figures, I don't think many people get past the first few minutes anyway, so <laughs> it's not a big deal. At which point I was already falling asleep. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yes, you're one of them. <laughs> so I don't even know what I'm saying in all of my uh, episodes. I just kind of go on autopilot. It's more of a Paprika, Perfect Blue situation in Tokyo Godfathers. <laughs> Playing Resident but, Evil Village um... in my brain. Yeah, well, that's the first thing. Well, the first thing I was going to say was actually um, a, a bit of bad news in, in the family, but a bit oh, of no. good news as of about 20 minutes ago. I have had a piece of food, I'm not too sure what it was, trapped in the teeth between my wisdom tooth and molar for probably the best part of seven months. And it's finally out. Hooray! <laughs> Sheer determination and botching it with my tongue and desperately trying to claw into my face. For over half a year, and it's finally out, and I'm having a drink in celebration right now. It has been irritating as buggery. That is a long time. Mm. That almost gets to the point where I think you could have done, uh, you know, permanent damage 
in like a uh, fested and created like bacteria that have drilled themselves into your teeth. Are you sure that your teeth are still uh, still uh, solid and they're they're sort of calcifying into a single unit now. Mm. But what what it felt like going into severe detail about the food that I have trapped <laughs> in my teeth because I've got terrible <laughs> dental hygiene. Um, and it felt more like. Um, you know when you get flakes of lime scale in kettles? Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, it felt more like a shard of that caught between my teeth rather than, you know, anything more sort of squishy or substantial. Uh, so I could just sort of feel it jutting out. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it's it's off to a, a good start this January 6th. <laughs> well, exactly. That's a, that's a phenomenal way to start the year. I'm sure it'll be onwards and upwards uh, continuously after that. Uh, great well, it's it, as you were saying, Resident Evil Eight. I have been crushing that, so that was almost like a pre whatever this is to my whatever that is. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I literally spent a week, I think, apart from the the few days I spent out with visiting family for New Year's, it just working my way through Resident Evil six times on escalating difficulty modes and. I think it's time to give it a nice long break. I've been unwinding with the Lego Incredibles game just to sort of detox myself, but wow, I, I thoroughly enjoyed every stupid minute of that game. Uh, so, you you played through it six times. What were the reasons for, for, six for playing it through six times? Um, well, the first time was, you know, with New Game Pluses, you're never too sure exactly how soon... I've had it with games in the past where I've gone to play New Game Plus and I've accidentally loaded or saved over the completed game file and botched it up, which is why mm. I've had to play The Last of Us 2 several more times than I ever wanted to. Um, the Last of Us 2? Uh, sorry, the, the Last of Us right, um, okay. twice more than I ever wanted to because I accidentally saved over old data. So I, I try and make a start of immediately jumping into the New Game Plus and then getting to the first checkpoint to sort of solidify right, it. I see. And then with nothing better to do, and it's like, well, I could get that challenge. I'll pot around for a bit. And then before you know it, you've completed the game again. It's like, right, okay, so I've got to get to the first save point again to log my process. But this time I'm on casual. And it's like, well, you know, I'm, I'm sort of speed running my way through it. So I might as well keep going. Oh, God damn it, I finished it again. Right, okay, <laughs> fine. This time I'm going to put it on hardcore. That will slow me down. I'll get to the first checkpoint. And then that's when New Year's hit. So uh, it's been a slow escalating sort of a spiral into into madness and the world of Res Evil 8. <laughs> I love the word escalating in that in that context. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what happened. I just one minute I was playing it and then it escalated and then I uh, then I played it another six times. Well, I thought it was an escalation. It's probably more of like a spiral and a, a descending spiral. one at that. <laughs> but I, it's 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 bad. It's it's a bad game, but it's so much fun. Mm. I I enjoyed every second playing it, um, but it suffers from a problem of a lot of modern video games where they just want to they want to tell their story. They want to tell their story so badly, and they don't care how often they have to interrupt the gameplay to do it. Mm. Um, which is fine the first time round, but then you get to the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and you you know desperately hammering the start button trying to find the skip option or get past. There's one section in the game. Um, it, I won't go into too many spoilers. I'm going to say that about a fair few things I'm talking about tonight. But um, it, it gets to the point where essentially the game opens up proper after the big castle section with uh, Lady Demescu, the giantess vampire that's got everyone horny for vampire giants. Um, and then it sort of proposes a sort of Dark Souls, Lord Souls option where you think, oh, so I can go for any one of the three remaining bosses. That's awesome. Uh, oh, actually, no, you can't. It's very linear. And the second stage is great the first time around, but it's so on rails. Mm. And you can't run through it. You've got to take it at the set pace. And it becomes deeply frustrating, particularly by the third time around. And even on the hardest difficulty, there's nothing challenging about it. Um, and, and then it sort of picks it up with the, the other two, uh, well, the sort of two remaining segments. Um, where am I going to go with this? It, it's got some great additions as um as uh, lady demoscu is is fantastic in her over the topness but the best character by far is uh, is a chap called heisenberg who is played like jeffrey coombs in in uh, reanimator or literally any b movie schlock that jeffrey coombs has ever done <laughs> and he is delightful he's chewing the scenery and the best part of the game by far his delivery and enunciations and syntax i could listen to him all day 
and it's a shame that the game sort of makes him almost the main villain and they use him a lot but it almost feels like they sort of underserve him which is a damn shame um it's got a lot of highlights um it's got some good boss battles the werewolf side of it makes no sense whatsoever and the combat section there's never really a change to the combat all they really do is sort of increase the bullet sponginess of enemies there's mm. there's no surprise or need to up your tactics so once you found a method that works for a particular segment you just you've got no reason to sort of deviate from that mm. um the only thing they really do on the the final difficulty village of shadows is they add a lot of arbitrary bullshit to make it more difficult than it needs to be um take the the castle section which is a lot of very tight corridors um there's there's some enemies in there that can essentially stagger you and uh, kill you in two shots there comes a segment where they block a corridor with lady demescu and this is in the final final difficulty segment they've got an enemy coming at you from behind who staggers you horribly and lady demescu is blocking the corridor you need to go down you need to enter that corridor to trigger her to come out the corridor in the first place which means she's now coming towards you you've got the other enemy behind you who will definitely hit you you've then got to run circles round them wait for demescu to get out the corridor and down the hallway so you can loop round her well uh well, the other enemy sort of strafes you and can attack from any direction and then peg it for the room and they do that three times and Demescu can pretty much one-shot you, and they keep finding ways of trapping you in really tight corridors that you can't manoeuvre around her, and then throw an extra enemy in there. And it becomes sheer fluke um, as, as to how you do it. Then there's the Heisenberg boss fight, which uh, you can't heal for the first chunk of it, and the strafe is a joke. And as I was saying to you the other day, there's no health bar on the guy, so you're pretty much just wailing on him and hoping for the best. Um... Uh, yeah, there, there are moments of it where it's an absolute grinding nightmare and not because it's difficult, but because the game deliberately makes it obtuse. And I had a real problem with that and I was very close to giving up on it, but I was so close to the end. I thought, no, I'm just going to I'm just going to keep plowing through it because it'd be senseless to get this far. And I did it. I achieved it. And I, I still love the game, but it's got a lot of flaws, like proper design flaws um which i don't know if it's better than seven or not it's got less atmosphere than seven it's definitely not scary in any way seven mm. at times got under your skin particularly the first third of it um and this one isn't scary in the slightest but it's more fun to play a lot mm. more fun to play i'd say um and then i mean the the obvious question does it try and fit in the law of Resident Evil, does it try and bring Umbrella in? Naturally, it does. Um, it comes off as ridiculously fan servey. But at the same time, I thought, oh, that's quite a nice touch. Wait a minute. No, that's <laughs> bullshit. Um, <laughs> but I, I appreciate the effort, but at the same time, I wish they hadn't bothered. Um, that's kind of like my entire attitude towards uh, Bioshock Infinite Burial at Sea. But sorry, yes. that, that's, that's an I digress. <laughs> Please carry on. Um, so uh, yes, I, I definitely recommend the game. It's it's like I say, it's it's incredibly incredibly fun, and it's got great replay value. Um, I just wish there was a better balance. Um, that it had less on rail sections towards the middle, and there was more of a challenge that wasn't just obfuscating the the difficulty mm. artificially. Um, so yeah, that was seven. When did that come out? I think it came out about seven months ago, um, and it was well worth the wait. Obviously, I spent a whole week playing it back to front front to back learning mm. absolutely everything about it so uh, yes if you enjoyed seven if you enjoyed aspects of five if you enjoyed the sort of campier elements of four and who doesn't there's it's it's trying to be four a lot of the time but unfortunately it comes off a lot as five yeah it sounded like it from how you were describing yeah. it um yeah i mean my i i loved seven until the part where it stops being seven and mm. decides to be something else. Um, <laughs> and I kind of forget, I mean, I played through that game about three times, I think, to get the plan. Uh, and I kind of forgave it by the last time and, and just went with it. Uh, but yeah, I remember being very disappointed um, on, on first playthrough about that. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm looking forward to playing it. I think uh, Capcom just have a way, don't they, of just kind of jumping the shark a little bit mm. and it's it's to what extent they 
um, make the jumping of the shark entertaining enough, as, if, if that makes sense. Um, yeah. yeah. Well, it's definitely entertaining. Um, the only problem is that Ethan Winters is awful as a protagonist. Mm. The number of times you're screaming at the screen, just have a conversation or move or have a personality or don't be ridiculous. Uh, that there comes a time where you're approached by one of the characters mm. to enter into a partnership that is mutually beneficial. And instead, Ethan decides to go with the antagonistic option and thus cause a cavalcade of catastrophes to happen for no good reason other than the fact that, no, I'm the good guy. You are the bad guy. I can't work with you. Hmm. Mm. Uh, we'll see. It won't be too long before I play it. I think I'm um, I'm in that m- mood now where I'm gonna I'm gonna try and blitz through as many of these games as I can. Um, as you know, I started God of War um, mm. over. In fact, it was the 27th, I think, that I started it and uh, finished it a couple of days ago. And um, yeah, I mean, I'm uh, again, I'm very late to the party on all these things. <laughs> Literally, uh, three four years is is average. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, it's 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 good. It's good. Um, I was looking through, you know, lists of best PS4 games and things, and it routinely comes in the top three. Um, wow. Yeah, I'm 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 surprised at that, to be honest. Uh, yeah, I, very much so. I think it's good. It's fine. Uh, no, oh, no, not fine. It's better than fine. Um, I think it's, it's a, good. It it is. It's, it's a solid good. I think my problems with it were, um, two, well, I, I have two main problems. I think the um, the combat gets repetitive and dull very quickly. Um, even though they do the best at, you know, trying to constantly bring, introduce new, um, new ways to kill things, I guess. New, new moves and things. It's, it's very easy to upgrade moves and have them do more damage and, you know, change things around and stuff. So, you know, you got to applaud them for that. But at the same time, I still felt as though you are essentially moving from one area to the next and waiting for things to jump out at you and um mm. and that just gets a little boring at time especially because um i i thought it was like a a proper open world and it is to an extent but it's also very linear um in in where it guides you to do things i felt yeah um and you know you look at this you've got like a dimension you can travel between dimensions essentially and you're looking at it thinking oh my god there are like seven um, seven Nordic dimensions, of course, where you've got um, Asgard and, and all these kind of things. That is absolutely massive. Then it turns out you only visit um, three of them and <laughs> only um, one's only... you don't. So the third one you don't even really properly visit. The second one is like a half and half and the first one is just enough, I think, if that makes mm. sense. But then, yeah, I follow. Yeah, then the main... Of, uh, overall hub world is I was surprised at how small it was to be honest mm. um, yeah it's a lot of artificially inflated scope yeah and it, it, it's it's very um, Ocarina of Time actually it, that's that's what it reminded me of Ocarina of Time came out 25 years ago and it's mm. like you have your Hyrule field and then it just kind of separates off into different areas and you've got your your, uh, you, you, well I mean they're all very Nordic based so you don't get like a a desert area but you know they're all slight you've got the mountain and you've got the kind of more forested area and then and you've got the ice level the arbitrary ice ice level the fire level and stuff like that so they even sort of do a good well not a good job but they create a wheel and it does feel like you're in the hub of a a wagon wheel Mm. Mm. so i mean um uh yeah it's again it's like this that side of things is good but I don't know if I um, am maybe just not as appreciative of the hack and slash genre as I thought I was that I got. So, you know, relatively bored so quickly. I love the puzzles. I thought the puzzles were exceptional. That's one of the things that kept drawing me to them. And the boss um, battles. Yeah, I I can't remember. Well, I mean, the the grandioseness of the boss battles were, like, Mm. insane, some of them. Uh, I don't want to spoil too much, just, you know... Um, uh, but it it was the puzzles which kept me coming back. I felt because I I just really love the ingenuity of getting to an area and figuring out, um, you know, 
what you needed to do to open a door or mm. uh, get rid of a this or that or the other to get to the next section. I thought that was that was excellent. Um, and then yeah, I was I was disappointed with the narrative because everyone says that that's its strength. I felt underwhelmed by it. Mm. I think I think the final half is very good and very strong, um, but I thought they missed it. They miss it, the trick. Oh, we finished the first episode of Games Master. Oh, so we have. Wow. Yeah. Uh, too busy talking about um, Dad of Boy. <laughs> yes, I'll uh, I'll load up the next one and uh, and, and see where we get to. Um, I suppose it's I was so lost in the narrative the first time round. Not lost as in I can't follow this, but just sort of absorbed in it. I I didn't really notice. Uh, I, I was just swept up along for the ride. It was only when rewatch, well, essentially watching uh, my brother playing through the game uh, the other summer. And he was sort of like skipping through the cutscenes, and uh, um, I was only half paying attention. And yeah, the, the game felt like a real slog going back to it until the point where you meet a certain character about two thirds of the way in, and the the plot finally really starts going as things start coming to dare I say ahead. Um, <laughs> that's uh, that that's sort of where the game really picks up. But on on essentially the replay, it did plod along especially all the stuff with the the dark elves and uh is it niflheim i think it's niflheim that just went on and on and on mm. yeah um yes i mean yeah that 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 dark elves level is uh, just it's it's really badly paced really mm. badly paced um and again without what i don't really want to spoil too much of it but i just felt it was from beginning to end as you say until until um, the certain character comes into it, P people talk about the strengths of it as this relationship between a father and a son, and I can I can appreciate that to an extent, but I still felt as it felt like like a game to me that was designed on a storyboard, and above the the sections of the storyboard was their relationship is this, and then it cuts to a new uh, section scenario, and it's like okay now their relationship is this, and you need to write the dialogue. And write, um, well, yeah, write the dialogue according to what this particular section of uh, descriptive, um, you know, emotional descriptive words is. And it never really felt like a blossoming, naturally progressive relationship in in how things with them unfold. Um, there's there's again, I don't want to spoil too much, but there's there's a bit um, kind of like two thirds of the way through, where um, the boy suddenly gets like quite angry yeah. and as quick as he gets angry he then not gets angry <laughs> yeah it, it literally is that it's like because they reached the point in the storyboarding now where it was like oh he realizes the error of his ways and he goes back to normal and i was like <laughs> well, you, what no this is ridiculous because I, I actually really like where that was going it seemed yeah. that was one of the points where it felt quite organic and then to have it just revert back to the status quo because that's what the story need. We're at that part of the story. I, I just and, and I felt that it was too much of that from from time to time. Um, I, as, as strange as it sounds, because this is something that um, I will possibly criticise in other things. I I really thought that um, we could have done with flashbacks um, because of the mm. this isn't really a spoiler, but at the start of the game. Um, we're at a situation where Kratos, the protagonist, the titular god of war, um, has just lost his wife. We're never really given much information as to uh, her death, how it happens, why it happens kind of thing. But she's dead and uh, and obviously he and the son are in mourning but in very different ways. And and that's kind of the, the crux of the story from beginning to end is uh, grief and coming together and understanding each other, you know, these, these this the father and the son that have a difficult relationship obviously the, the son had a better relationship with his mother kind of thing um which is obviously very there's, there's a lot to delve into there it's, it's a very juicy subject but i usually i would say that not saying anything about that uh, about about what happened prior not having flashbacks is what i would have preferred it's a very ballsy move to 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 uh tell don't show um but i don't know There's so I, much telling in this exactly and i don't feel as though what they did was strong enough um i wanted to see um 
how this family unit kind of operated, you know, outside because they they make it impossible really to 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 figure out um, because you know just it, it, it's as if I mean it's it's supposed to be a father and a son with a difficult relationship, but they may as well have never met before from mm. from from which was my personal interpretation of their relationship and I think he says something in, at, at some point during the game of well you were never really here you were away doing this that or the other and um, that's again that's acceptable but it's like okay so how was it when he was there is it was it just yeah. this was it frosty was it I, I you know I just it was as though if they wanted to do it without flashbacks it needed better writing and I don't think that what they did was as strong as it should have been. Um, yeah, yeah. I wish I, I wish I had more moments uh, that I could remember clearly. It just felt very, very stilted. I could. I, I love the themes of it. There are some great themes that um, become more obvious towards the end of the game. Mm. Uh, so I won't spoil those too much. Uh, but I think that the, the themes are excellent. Um, they get all my respect in the world for trying to incorporate these things into a video game but I'm, I'm i'm playing it thinking this is just sort of hanging on the coattails of the last of us and isn't doing anywhere mm. near as good of a job of of interpreting this relationship between an adult and and a kid and um, it's a shame because one of the things that really excelled at i felt were the the boat scenes which were essentially just very long loading screens mm. and those are moments where not necessarily character development but very subtle character development where generally it's uh, it's the son i forget his name um uh, the titular boy Ar atreus um, thank you atreus uh, atreus just sort of asking about kratos's life or the world around him and sort of mythology of things and just having back and forths and that's sort of helped out by the appearance of another character later on that sort of adds a, a third voice to to the conversations and i really enjoyed those moments yeah um but they felt somewhat superfluous because they were so subtle in how they sort of showed the development like joel and ellie you know the the frosty relationship slowly warming up over time and the way they treat each other but you never really get anything of true substance in any of the many 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 times you are in the boat mm. <laughs> Yeah, they're just nice little segments, but they add nothing really to the plot or fleshing out the characters further. Apart from saying, "This is where we are at now with their relationship." Mm, mm. Mm. Yeah, hundred um, percent. Again, it's it's because we don't have a marker to establish their relationship to begin with. Everything mm. that we're coming off is now a post. You know, um, when the post section, the genius thing about the Last of Us was at the start of the game, we see Joel pre the um, apocalypse and then we cut to 20 years later and we see what he's hardened into and that's mm. that gives us a good um grounding there for um how this character has changed because of the circumstances that he's been placed under you know obviously kratos has got all these games behind him so i suppose you can say that that's that's a foundation in, in, in and of himself because this is a sequel despite it being called god of war it is still a sequel um, but there'll be a lot of new players to the franchise and, uh, you know, he, this is still a new family, essentially, so, f essentially that he is, um, that he's built for himself. The generalized story of God of War is that, um, doing a bit of research, he was kind of like a, uh, an everyday boy and he trains himself up to be a soldier and uh, declares war on the gods or something like that and yeah they so, murder his family don't they I think no he, he, the the amazing thing about it which i didn't realize is he murders his own family mm. um yeah so they give him all these superpowers I, I think this is how it goes they give him all these superpowers and um um i think it's uh Ares? is it Ares? that's the god of war the, the actual god of war yeah yeah so Ares wants him to kind of take up the mantle kind of thing and uh, Kratos is resisting it and then he kind of prods him and he knows that the best way to kind of prod him is um, is if he gets him to inadvertently murder his family so, so he kind of sets him <laughs> on this yeah, kind of sets him out to, to attack this church or something like that unaware that his his family are also hiding in this church he just kind of massacres everyone and it's only when uh, when he's finished brutalizing 
um, everyone there that he realizes what he's done and this is the um, the uh, the kind of catalyst for him to just go you know absolutely insane sort of thing so it's 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 uh, it's, it's an amazing um, story when you consider it that way and then the rest of the games are him just brutalizing the gods and taking revenge <laughs> for 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 what's what's happened and then at the end of God of War 3 he kills Zeus who it turns out is, is, is his father because of course um, of course of course and then so we go from that to literally this game and mm. you know th th there are no questions answered about the intervening period between going from the uh the Greek law as it were to all the way to the Norse yeah, yeah it's all a bit, the way of, a, to the bit Norse of a leap mm. and they even that they sort of address it midway through don't they there's a section where you're in a particular realm and you get to have a conflab with uh, with old Zeus but it's very short lived and it doesn't really add to the narrative it's merely just saying hey it's Re Zeus remember this thing issue? yeah mm. yeah and it's a shame because they really could have done something interesting with that within the level itself because by the time you sort of you have the the brief interaction with Zeus you then have to backtrack through the level mm yeah, I mean, as I say, it's it's a good game. I started out being kind of really indifferent towards it, and then, as is common with games that I play, I, you know, you warm to it as you're playing through, and you start to appreciate things and and things build up. But yeah, I, I am surprised at uh, at the level of praise it's been given. Uh, as I was saying to you the other day, I think most of it is in the technological aspects mm. of it i think it looks amazing sounds amazing um the the, the world that's cinematic yeah the world that they have built is just stellar it's just brilliantly designed and um i'm a big fan of it from that perspective but mm. i think it it reminds me of the last of us 2 in the sense that um it's getting all the all this praise from the game journalists and whoever else because it's like uh, you know it's 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 kind of they're supposed to laud at it because of what it's trying to do, mm. even if it doesn't necessarily accomplish it. It's like, oh, well, well that's not the point because uh, it's an emotional tale, so therefore... Yeah, of this course... is a game for grown-ups, not yeah. gamers. For yeah, yeah. gamers, this is for, this is for people who enjoy art. It's got that sort of snobbery value to it. Yeah, so, I mean... Despite the really pedestrian gameplay elements. Well, the, as I say, the puzzle sections are fine, but it is basically a hack and slash with puzzle elements. There's nothing... There's nothing snob-worthy in it, apart from the fact that it's got a narrative sewn throughout it. Yeah, I mean, and it's not as though... I mean, I said earlier that maybe I didn't like Hack and Slash as, as much as I thought I did, but something like Bloodborne, I was addicted to. Mm. Once I finally got into Bloodborne and understand understood what it was trying to do, Bloodborne suddenly became like one of the most incredible experiences exactly. I've ever played. Yeah, um, whereas God of War just feels like you can get better at the Hack and Slash elements, but you can't... You can't master your own style. Mm. Bloodborne and the Souls games allow you to approach it however you want, essentially, for, from a limited standpoint. But each time you can experience the game differently if mm. that's what you want. Rather yeah, exactly. Than just sort of sticking to the tried and tested, and you can learn how to like cheese the bosses and, and learn things. But God of War is just button bash until everything's dead. Yeah, it is, because you... you uh... You go walking for a, for a while, and maybe there'll be some exposition, and you know between uh, between the characters as, as you're walking, very much as as the Last of Us does, and uh, you'll find out some stuff, and then you'll reach a dead end, and you'll think, oh, okay, so this is where I'm going to be attacked, and then sure enough, mm -hmm. th they throw in like, depending on the circumstances and, and where you are in the game, it, it'll be like a small group of enemies or a large group of enemies or a small group and then a large group and or a mini boss or something like that and um yeah it's it's one of those experiences where you think if i could just kill everything in one shot i wonder how much quicker i'd get through this game you know is, yeah. is, is it just like padding throwing all these enemies at me is it actually a, a, a five six hour game uh padded out because of um the the, the difficult sections as it were mm. um yeah, I mean, yeah, it's it's it is um it's the the bare minimum of what I'd expect really. And that's that sounds like I'm damning it a bit, but it's I think we've progressed so much. Or maybe I just got too too much um 
too high expectations of what video games should be these days. But um, I am increasingly, and this was the same to Spider Man. I don't know if we ever had this conversation about. Yeah, we had this Spider-Man. chat. Yeah, I figured you were going to bring Spider Man into this conversation. I like Spider Man well enough, but I feel I, it. It strikes me very similar of God of War, in the sense that I became bored with its combat. After a while, I really enjoyed the, the you know swinging through New York, but it was mm. the, the the technological aspect of swinging through New York that was the main entertainment there, uh, m- much in the same way that you know the building of the world and the details of of God of War is. Uh, I was I was consistently impressed with that. Um, mm. both... Right down to the fact that you got to wait until the final third of the game to actually get anything Spider-Man villain related. Yeah, and, and two and thirds I've... of the game are Mister Negative, and it, that's all well and good. But I, in his ten years of being a, a character established in Spider-Man lore, I have never cared for Mister Negative, and the exactly. game did nothing to endear me to him any further. And it's just like I just want to get to the Scorpion, please, just let me get to a Spider-Man villain. Yeah, and yeah, exactly. Um, much like God of War. Spider-Man, um, it's only the final third of the game where I was really into the narrative. Mm. Um, it, it, even if the final third, actually. I mean, it may even be late. I mean, uh, to, to its credit, I thought the finale of God of War is just astonishingly good. Uh, mm. it, it, it is worth playing through the rest of the game to get to the finale, I think. Which um, Agreed. Yeah. T- the, the twists and turns of it and the way that the characters all finally kind of intermingle and come together that's that's when the payoff does feel earned and um and i love the way i mean i, I won't say too much but just as a uh, fluke really so you have the main game you have the ending uh and then what i really loved again not spoiling it is how the credits rolled you've still got control of the character but the credits kind of roll over the, the game still playing and i thought that was a really nice touch um and it never really stops and does its thing of okay, you know, you've got to appreciate all these people. Um, so you're having the finale, everything's happened. It's a really kind of, it's it's epic in a different way, this epic, which I really appreciated. Uh, th- throughout the entire game, you're, um, well, no, I suppose there is a, a massively epic bit, but, but the main finale instance is purely character-driven and it's it's really intense and really good. Um, and, then, uh, and then there's kind of like, it, it puts you straight away in the post game, and I, th- I thought how it does that is r- so refreshing, just to drop you in the post game where there's still a continuity about it, and they've recorded dialogue and stuff for the characters to say after the game if you go back to certain areas, and it's it's like the, the story continues. Um, I was really impressed with that, and then you go back home, and uh, did you do this? I, I must have done. It's, it's been a while, but... It was it was purely, um, as I say, it, it, it was a fluke. Um, but they, they kind of hinted it during the kind of... Um, as you're finishing the game. And they, they mentioned something about, I can't wait to get home. And it was just a matter that I was going to start collecting things from the very beginning. I thought, well, I need to get the... I need to kill the ravens and do that kind of thing. So I'll go straight mm-hmm. back home, work my way through the game again that way. And uh, when you get back home... It's like the official end of the game. Um, uh, you 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 go in the house and they're like, "Oh God, I'm just desperate for sleep after what an adventure." Just just need sleep, and uh, and so I won't say any more than that. But it is just so good. It is exquisite, and at that point you realize, "Oh my God, all this game has just been a setup for the next game," <laughs> and um, and that's that's what I liked. Um, I, I, yeah, I, I'd tweet this story definitely um, so that this was maybe more focused. Um, again, not wanting to spoil too much, but you have one aim in this and it just kind of feels like everything else happens just uh, tangentially almost. It's it's like the, the main crux of what I wanted to explore is just a, a side uh, kind of thing. Um which is going to come into into the next game. Um, I was linking this to, to Spider Man, wasn't I? Yeah. So 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 Spider Man is very similar in the sense that you're playing through all this game. As you say, the me- the Mister Negative stuff is incredibly dull. Um, and you are being forced to do all these things that I felt would just kind of 
uh, yeah, the, the uh, padding. And then it's only really when you actually get to the finale of the game um, that the emotional drama properly kicks in, much like it does in God of War. And then it, it strikes me as like, it's not how you, what, what's the saying? It's not something, something, it's how you leave them. And, uh, and I feel as though these are two games that have rely entirely on thinking, yeah, well, we can pet out a lot of the game and then we'll get them, you know, for, for the final scenes almost uh, because that's what they'll remember. Um, and I think both games rely on that a lot for people that have, you know, so much goodwill towards them. It's like, yeah, but it finished really good, didn't it? It's like, yeah, it did, but it was kind of a, also a bit of a slog at points. So... I don't know Agreed. Yeah. It's, it's one of those games where I'm glad I played it, but I don't feel the need to ever play it again. And I dare say I'll feel the same way about the sequel. Um, mm. Unless I can sort of break the mold. But then again, the series has been running on its hack and slash elements and with sort of cinematic gameplay being the new thing since The Last of Us, a generation of, well, two generations of console ago, there's no need for them to really break the mold so i don't know i i wait to be convinced and i shall continue playing lego incredibles until that point <laughs> are you um have you got miles morales out of curiosity no i'm waiting for it to drop down to about 20 quid because from what i hear it's only essentially glorified dlc yeah it's about um i don't know i think they said there's like with all the quests and everything it's seven to ten hours probably but the main story you can get done within about three yeah and uh, sold that for a lark. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Uh, yeah, I was, I, I didn't know what to play next. I mean, I'm going to try and plat this. It'll take an, a, a while still to. Oh yes, it will. To plat oh, it. Oh god, but... those Valkyries. Yeah. Good luck. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I gave up on them. Yeah, it's not going to be fun. No, uh, it really isn't. But... You should probably just quit. <laughs> and find something fun to play. <laughs> you know my OCD, Matthew. Um, uh, but yeah, so I'll need to get that done. And then I'm thinking, just when you were talking about Resident Evil 2, uh, Resident Evil 8, I might uh, jump on Resident Evil 2, because that's... That's um, a grand idea. I, that, think... I had a lot of fun with that. And yeah. the plat, I mean, you'll do the plat, no problem whatsoever. I think I'm about 80-odd percent, and they're just the arbitrary ones, like finish the game, taking only 40,000 steps and bits and bobs like that. Yeah. So I'm right on the crux of it, but I don't want to go for the frustration of having to play through the entire game and then find out that I took five steps more than would get me the trophy and then throwing the controller down in rage and despair well the trophy guide says um six six attempts um minimum is needed mm. so i mean uh yeah i mean that's something I, I did with the first resident evil game to plan them that I, you 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 get used to the beats of the game and knowing it so well that yeah. you can you can knock Very it out true. in like two hours so um yeah, I'm actually strangely looking forward to it in the sense that uh, it'll be fun to play through the game the first time and then just uh, speed run it <laughs> after that. And just because uh, that was it's actually a lot of fun. I don't know if you ever tried that properly in in, uh, in the Resident Evil remake, but um, there's a lot of fun to be had speed running those games. Oh, no, I, I have a love hate relationship with the Resident Evil remake every single time I load it up. I start playing it for the first chunk. I'm reminded of how crappy the camera angles are uh, for zombie attacks. And oh, that's part of its charm. Frustration. It's part of its charm, but it takes me a good few attempts to get over that hurdle. And if I'm not in the mood to, to take a, a second leap at it straight away, then it gets deleted immediately off the console and shelf for a bit. <laughs> I, I love the game to bits, but within the first two minutes of gameplay, it pisses me off so much that I just delete it. Mm, that's a shame. It is, but hey-ho. I'm close to a Platinum on Res Evil 3, but I don't think that's ever going to happen. Uh, beat the game on Inferno mode with an S rank, and what else am I going to do? I think I'm going to complete the game without opening the weapons locker, which is a shit, because my unlimited ammo pissed on rocket launcher in that crate, so, you know, that <laughs> desperately takes away the, the edge that I need. Um, yeah... There'll be, there'll it's, be a... it's never going to get done. I'm, I'm so close, but it's never going to get done. There, there will be a way around it. I remember um, thinking that for Resident Evil Seven, and mm. then, um, and then, uh, yeah, just going online and finding a, a guide to do it, and um, yeah, that, that was sorted out. No problem, True. really. 
you've got the mad hat's difficulty to worry about. Oh, I, I, I must have mentioned it at some point. I did do the Resident Evil 7, only opening the box three times. Yeah. But right at the beginning of the game, I accidentally opened the box to find something. I can't remember what I was doing and then realised, oh, fuck, what have oh, I done? Because no. the game forces you to open the box two more times later on. Mm. So the moment I got into the final third in the mines, I couldn't open the box to get oh. any of my items. I managed to do it by nook of my crook, mm. um, but it was intense, <laughs> I must say. Yeah. But uh, it felt good to walk away with that trophy. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I've got Madhouse still to do, which I'm really looking forward to. I think I've told you before that's... I want to have a VR unit to do that because they change mm. up the... Um, the change of the placement of enemies and things. Um, not to spoil it, but apparently not so much. Oh, no, really? Only for the jack section. After that, the rest of the game may as oh. well be identical. Oh, I didn't realise that. Oh, that's mm. a it's, it's a bit of a sham. Oh, here's one. Did you realise that Jack is the last of the mega bosses you fight? Apart from, you know, the, the obvious end boss. I always thought it was... Um, what's the name? The The... The sun that you fight in the water house, but it's um, not. It's Jack. Is it? Yeah. Oh. Which makes yeah, they just sort of ditch the the sun and bring Jack back, even though he's you know clearly been killed in your boss battle earlier. But it's it's so weird. I wasn't aware of that. I'll have to. Hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, when I play it eventually again, I'll have to keep an eye on it. Um, yeah, but I was looking forward to playing the Madhouse, um, getting that Madhouse trophy anyway, because, uh, I don't know, it's, um, I, I, have you got the, the buzzsaw in that? No, you know? I, I've unlocked practically nothing in that game. Oh, well, I've played it about five times end to end, uh, both on my console and with friends, and yet I have nothing to show for it. <laughs> that's a shame. Well, they say that, um, uh, that using the buzzsaw in, in Madhouse is a lot of fun. And, uh, yeah, so that's how I intend to play it. Hopefully with a VR headset. Um, but we'll, we'll have to see. Cause, uh, I mean, hopefully with the VR 2 just being announced and stuff, they'll be coming down in price. We'll have to see. I just imagine trying to do the game in, what, what is it? Is it four or three hours you've got to do Resident Evil 7 in? Three. To get that? Three hours. Yeah. Trying to get those shadow puzzles in that amount of time. <laughs> that's going to be where the main time sink goes. And that's one of the things that Res Evil 8 really has against it. All of the puzzles are pathetically easy. They don't even count as puzzles. And mm. it's it, they don't even have anything that comes close to the shadow matching puzzles. Um, nor do they try. They merely go, oh, well, puzzles are a staple of the series. So I guess this is a segment that's not a cutscene and it's not a fight. So here you go. And... Yeah, they are the weakest puzzles in any of the Resident Evil games. So pretty much exactly as um, as uh, five came out from four with its uh, action sensibilities, so has um, uh, eight from seven. Just kind of pretty much. Its, if it uh, weren't for the fact that it was so stop start, that the first chunk of the game is like full on action, and then it slows down to the Lady Demoscu castle crawling, and then it becomes a pretty much prolonged puzzle piece which is really frustrating then it becomes an on rail action piece for a bit and then finally you get to the sort of the main area and that's where you're finally allowed to fight off the chain rather than just like small pockets of enemies this is like no now you're going through this area where you will constantly be engaging mm. and it's not until that moment you felt ah oh, good a challenge yeah yeah it's a very strange game. It feels like it's been made by several different design committees and they sort of stitched the project together. Yeah, it wouldn't be, be a surprise. Um, just looking through the trophy guide, apparently it only takes three playthroughs to get the uh, the Platinum. I can see that, yeah. It's only because I did two runs on normal, then ca went back to casual to soak up as much cash and upgrade as many weapons as I could. Mm. But uh, I've got myself the, the rocket pistol now. So uh, the problem is that I've got to finish the current game I'm on to then go back and then try the speed running. But I'm pretty sure that I'm capable of getting one or two more trophies in the in the run of it. Mm. Yeah, we will have to uh, keep. Oh, I was going to say keep us in the loop, but you you will be out of gaming now for the foreseeable future, won't you? Uh, yeah, yeah, pretty week? much another five, no, six months. It'll be until I'm. 
back at the station again, which is a shame. Um, and the funny thing is, that, as I said, I'm, I'm playing a Lego game, and some of the trophies in that make God of War's Platinum look like a doddle. <laughs> the Lego game is usually what you do for an easy plat. And I'm just looking at this going, how? <laughs> Why would you do this? Get, getting hats off on Bloodborne was easier than this. <laughs> so what kind of stuff do they have you do? Each level just has an arbitrary challenge. Like um, the, the one that really threw me was you've got to um, fall through the sky without being hit by any of the debris from the falling plane. Mm. And the game moves like you're on an ice rink of, of butter and you've like lewd up your, your skates to Griswold toboggan levels of slipperiness. Mm. And you're a tiny figure. You can't tell where you are, exactly where the distance is of the things. And I thought I'd done it. Um, but apparently not. So hmm. even if I think that I managed to achieve it, it still goes, no, you got hit by something. You just didn't see it, because how could you? Oh, yeah. I think it may be the first ever LEGO game that I don't platinum, which is pathetic, really. But <laughs> Which game did you say it was? Incredibles? The Incredibles, yeah. Wow. Of all the which is LEGO games. Some utter nonsense in there that is probably achievable completely by fluke more than skill. Or yeah actually trying so that's going to drive me batshit for the next couple of days and that'll be the game that i finish out on not final fantasy 7 remake that'll be the summer oh, um, nice. but instead the uh in lego balls yeah uh let's have a quick look lego incredibles have you played the indiana jones lego games oh. yeah in fact when when i had my post-surgery uh when we were living over it uh, in the house together um i i spent my two weeks in recuperation, just sitting and grinding that game, trying not to think about the uh, the pain I was in. All oh, right, oh, I see. Um, I've not touched it since. Well, you'll <laughs> God, this is amazing. So, according to the PSM Profiles Trophy Guide, uh, Lego: The Incredibles has a difficulty rating of two out of ten, <laughs> <laughs> and should only take you twenty hours to complete. <laughs> it it can be done. It's just the flukiness of it, and every time you fail it. And you only know you failed it when you finish that four-minute segment. Is to quit out, sit through a really long loading screen, go back into the menu, load the level up again, sit through the loading screen again, and then restart it all after the sort of intro cinematic. And mm. it's just every single time you want to take a stab at it, it takes about six to seven minutes. What would you say is the best Lego game? Ooh, there's an oxymoron. Jurassic um, World is pretty fun. Um, the problem with any of the Lego games is that you're very aware you're just sitting playing a game. You know, in those moments where you're not really losing yourself in it, you just know you're doing a collectathon. Mm. Um, ooh, the best. Um, I rather enjoyed the Lego Star Wars saga. That was good fun. Um, they're all janky as shit, though. That's the problem. I've never once played a Lego game that doesn't break and cause you to have to restart the machine at some point. Well, um, uh, well, let's go through the list. So, according to thegamer.com, mm. of the 15 greatest Lego video games ever ranked, <laughs> uh, 15 Pirates of the Caribbean, uh, 14 The Force Awakens, uh, 13 Lego Dimensions, 12 Jurassic World, 11 The Incredibles, 10 Indiana Jones, 9 Marvel Super Heroes 2, 8 Star Wars 2 The Original Trilogy, 7 Lord of the Rings, 6 Lego City Undercover, 5 Lego DC Super Villains, 4 Batman 3, um, 3 Lego Marvel's Avengers, uh, 2 Harry Potter Years 1 to 4, and number 1. The original Potter, Star Wars, the video game. Oh, as in the um, the original, the prequel one. saga or the OT? Uh, the oh, hang on, because um, they did they did the OT, the prequels, and then they did the combination, didn't they, of the the saga? And w- now they've got one coming out of all nine movies. It was the one that made it big on the PS2, whichever one that was. It's it's the one I had on the Xbox at uni. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, that must be the OT. Even though everyone had the Phantom Menace game, which was so much fun, right? And that was what really put them on the path. You know, everyone had the Phantom Menace, and then pretty much 
they they cracked the formula there and they never had to look back. They just made a few tweaks here and there. Mm. Mm. So, yeah, I mean, the, the Harry Potter ones are a lot of fun. Mm. Uh, I really enjoy that. In fact, they're more fun than watching the movies because <laughs> that you actually get to, you know, dither around with it. And it it feels like a good combination to have like the floating bricks and the fast build and and the quirkiness. It, it lends itself really well to the Harry Potter stuff. I can imagine that. Um, I can imagine if I were to uh, take up a, a, a Lego game, there'd probably be the, the Harry Potter ones, I think, um, would, would fill that gap in the same way mm. that the Star Wars ones did all those. Uh, years ago. Although these Harry Potter games actually from like a decade ago, so oh, a while ago, yeah, they've yeah. combined them now. Pretty much all of them come out. Um, the the DC ones are usually pretty good. Uh, the mm. Super Villains one, um, I was playing that last year, and that was a good little time sink. And the Lego Batman Three has got some genuinely good jokes in there. Because the second one was when they started actually adding voices rather than just like rrr, 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 and oh, silent yeah. comedy. Uh, Lego Batman 2 was when they actually started doing voice recordings. And then I think Lord of the Rings was when they first started using actual samplings from the movies. So the sound quality of that one is up, down, up, down, up, down. It's it's a really janky one, actually. The Lord of the Rings one isn't all that fun. Mm. Uh, it's a very muddy brown world with a lot of clipped audio. But mm. the Batman games and the, the DC games are always really fun, really vibrant. Every now and again, they'll actually get a joke that lands. And huge rosters of characters that aren't just like the Incredibles game at the moment. Fireman, policewoman, <laughs> old man. It's just like, oh no, here's Magog, Man Bat, Killer Croc Goons. You know, there's a bit of everything. To be fair, aren't there only like five characters in the Incredibles? Pretty much, yeah. And trying to pad out a hundred and I think there's a hundred and thirteen characters in the game, and no. some of them are really stretching incredulity. How can you? What? Unless mm. you're incorporating other Pixar, you know. Uh, there, there's characters. a few, oh, but only one from each movie. That's one of the nice little bonus things. It's like there's like one Pixar-related character. But they're really weird. I mean, you get Flick the Ant, which makes sense. Woody the Cowboy, yep, that makes sense. Dory, okay, sure, better than Marlin. The chef from Ratatouille, the car from Cars. Um, and then from Inside Out, you get the, what's his name? Bing Bong, the imaginary elephant. <coughs> it's like, but what about Joy, the main character? No. <laughs> um, for the good dinosaur, you get Spot, the boy. For Up, you get Russell rather than the old man. And it's just like, what? what is going on here? <laughs> Who picked these characters? <laughs> It's uh, it's it's image rights, of course. Not uh, not all those characters um, will 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 wave away will wave away wave away their image rights. Yeah, uh, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> um, nice. Um, I mean, I mean, you look at all the properties that Pixar have. It's it's astonishing that they've actually um, only done the the Incredibles. You'd have thought, uh, as you say, something like Toy Story would have been. Toy Story would be perfect. perfect Toy Story yeah. Lego. It's got four movies. I could easily do that. Yeah, I'd, I'd buy that. Mm. Um, yeah, I mean, The Incredibles makes sense because they obviously have, like, the Marvel DC superhero games. So all you need, really need to do is reskin them and all the elements work exactly the same. So it makes sense, but they only had two movies to go off. And you've got to play the second movie first to play the first movie in story mode. <laughs> <laughs> it's that's it's fantastic. a very very bizarrely put together game. I'm I'm enjoying it immensely because Lego games I can just put a podcast on, and enjoy the simple cartoony colours and things moving around and that sense of that sense of achievement that only comes when it says you've got a gold brick, mm. <laughs> or here's character X from the background scene. Mm. But uh, yeah yeah I'm looking forward to playing the new Star Wars one when that eventually comes out. But that's been trapped in development hell for two years. Yeah, I could never go anywhere near that because it mm. uh, it incorporates the Disney sequels. I think I'd rather uh, just stay away from that. I'd I'd, I'd prefer like a, a remastering of the original ones that I played back in the day. Yeah. I mean, um, yeah, I think I played that one to death and have never felt the need to to do any of the other ones because it's like, you know, I'm I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> There's a formula. It's like the Telltale games. You've played you played one or two of the best ones, and by that point, just cut it off at the root. Yeah, although I still need to play Wolf Among Us, I think. I think that's. Oh, yeah, that was really good. That's the last one I need to play. Oh, no, yeah, tell that, a lie. That I, I got hold of um, the final uh, Walking Dead um, oh. recently. So, I mean, that's that will be the official one. Uh, I'm not expecting anything from it. I think it, <laughs> it, it was released and no one said anything. So, I think that probably uh, 
um, some <laughs> sort says a lot the, yeah. the, the, the quality of it but just for the amount of hours that I put into those games and um, uh, yeah I, for, for, for whatever um, like strange reason there is the, the, the strange need to, to, to finish Clementine's story there I think <laughs> when I'm feeling particularly sadistic um, I'll probably do that to myself and, and that'll be another one I think I'll have to uh, uh, record and just for posterity and, and maybe uh, uh, upload that to the channel or something at some point yeah mm. that's a, a good shout oh god uh, no no game I think will ever immediately leap into my top 10 of all time faster than the new frontier that was an experience and I will treasure it always we've spoken about it several times on the show yeah. but wow <laughs> just wow yeah plenty plenty of games over the years I've hated from frustration of gameplay um I can't remember a game that I've ever disliked so immensely because of the <laughs> because of how That's amazing utterly stupid the the narrative is and the characters there's a there's a a fine combination of ridiculousness in uh, in the in the yeah in, in, in both those two coming together it's like i could i could appreciate the, the crap characters if the story went somewhere and i could appreciate it being a crap story if the characters had an ounce of common sense about them but the mixture of them both together being so utterly horrible is uh, it's it's an experience I, I can't relate to anything else in gaming it's well I, I can't think of a better segue to talk about one of my favourite movies of, of 2020. No, 2022. Uh, no, 2021. That's the what one. year is it? That's the year yeah. we just left. Uh, <laughs> you know how I love me some good, bad movies? Mm. I have got a film that is incompetent, inept, so much fun and utter joy. Deathstalker 2. My God, this movie is fantastic. Uh, I've posted a, an image of the uh, the poster in uh, in the chat, so you get a sense of a proper fantasy sword and sorcery '80s exploitation movie. Uh, oh it's, wow! I love awesome. this style of artwork, and the movie has a reputation, uh, I've, and it crops up in several of the books that I've got. You know, best worst movies, and I think even Red Letter Media covered it at one point, but. I've I can only remember them saying everyone's having a lot of fun. But I got myself a copy. And the movie from start to finish is an absolute delight because all of the actors, I think that they were aiming for a comedy because the first one came out, it was very much of its time. You know, it's pretty much like every other five minutes, there's a rape scene. There's mm. pig men. It's an epic quest for blah, 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 blah. Now we're making a sequel. In this, all of the actors know that they're making a bad movie and they really lean into it. So the the main char characters are you've got sort of like a Peter Quill, Han Solo, too cool for school, quippy type who is endlessly funny in both his like intentional and unintentional delivery. The uh, the queen, the the main woman, she's an ex adult. I think she was like a Playboy pinup or something, or Mayfair or something, and she's just hamming it up spectacularly and having a lot of fun there's so many scenes um where they're on the brink of cracking up and you can see them make trying to make each other corpse in the film and there's one scene where they make a really awkward bit of sexual innuendo and the camera holds on them and then they both smile at each other and burst out laughing because they just couldn't hold it back and the whole film just feels like they're desperately trying not to laugh before the director says cut all the way through <laughs> the main villain looks like Nigel Farage <laughs> there's a side plot about the the queen having been cloned into like her nega version that needs to be stopped there are all these interesting characters like the mercenary and his band of, of of renegades who turn up and just cause absolute chaos and destruction only to be like killed instantly. This film made me feel like I did the first time I watched Guardians of the Galaxy. Just like I was not expecting this film to capture that style of 80s charm, make me laugh, uh, j rogues, princesses swashbuckling action ridiculous cheap sets tits galore um it's it's 
so good. It's so good, Dan. You have to track it down. It is ridiculous. And I had a smile plastered on my face. Me and my friend both. We, we love bad movie nights, so we'll get together and watch films like this. And we were just sitting this film, like, ha hands over our mouths, laughing when we weren't smiling. And just, it, it has to be seen to be believed. It is magnificent in just how knowingly bad it is and, and how far the actors lean into the whole thing. It is a joy. And I'm going to be chasing the high of trying to find a film that makes me feel this happy again um, until I, I don't know, get around to watching Spider-Man No Way Home or The Suicide Squad or something again. It, it's great. It's really, really good in the worst possible way. Have you seen the, the first one? Uh, no, I've got it, ready to roll. Right. Um, but it, that film never makes the best of the worst list. It's always like, yeah, you know, it's 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 a low budget. It takes itself too seriously. This one just leans into, ah, let's just have a laugh. <laughs> it looks amazing from the trailer. I know exactly oh, what you great. mean. I mean, uh, it looks, uh, from the first half of the trailer, it looks like a soft call porno. But um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it looks, uh, looks a lot of fun. Yeah, I'm glad you, where did you watch it? Um, I imported a copy from Germany. Ah, um, oh, the Germans, always. Good old Germans. So, uh, yeah, I've, I've got it. It's really nice. It's one of those Digibook styles. It's got like a faux leather front cover. Uh, and then the Blu-ray on one side, the DVD on the other. And then sort of almost glued into the middle is 16-page booklet. All in German, but filled with photos. <laughs> <laughs> Just wonderful glamour shots of the main actress and, and gratuitous shots throughout the movie. And it's just... I'm so glad I own it. I really am. My life is better having seen this movie. How did you hear of it then? Was it just a Red Letter Media thing? Yeah, I was aware of it from Red Letter Media, but it was like background viewing. And it was only when I was going through a book, Dad bought me for, was it this birthday or last Christmas? It must have been my birthday this year. Of just like, here are some good, bad films, like The Room and Samurai Cop and whatnot. And this cropped up and it said, it's sort of, it doesn't take itself as seriously as the first movie, and clearly everybody is just in it for the laugh. And mm. I thought, oh, this sounds really good. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I bought it, and yeah, now, now I need more of this, and I'm going to be desperately chasing that high for a while. <laughs> he, he does look like Nigel Farage as well, the, uh, the main <laughs> villain. <laughs> this is an amazing comparison. <laughs> It changes everything you think about the film. It's like, is, is this just a run-up to Brexit? <laughs> is this what he's hoping to bring us back to? Because I would vote <laughs> we got a life like this. Oh, very cool. Yeah. Uh, how much was it? Uh, I think you can get it for about a tenner. Let me uh, let me just hop onto Amazon. Other platforms are available. Uh, Desktop 2. The only problem is that now I'm pretty much buying everything in this series before it gets deleted. Uh, mm. Yeah, you can get the DVD for £11. You can get the special edition Blu-ray for 17 that that's got the booklet in it. Mm. Oh, very cool. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, well, you know, when uh, when the channel expands and we're able to produce, you know, mul well, I was going to say multiple videos a week, but we already do produce <laughs> multiple videos a week. Um, you know, more content, then uh, we'll have a our own kind of best worst film segments i'm sure and uh that'd be cool too yeah it, i would love to watch this movie live if we could ever do like a live recording or something yeah i mean maybe that's something i mean that that would take significantly less time wouldn't it, if we just did uh director's commentaries type mm. uh, voiceovers <laughs> maybe that's what we should do instead of reviews from retrospectives and save ourselves like a, an additional eight hours <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I think that's got legs i think we should uh, experiment with that yeah absolutely Cool. Mm. Oh, maybe we'll do that at some point. Um, yeah. Uh, any final thoughts, or should we just see it to the end of this episode, which is five minutes away? Oh, I could. I, I won't talk about Spider Man because that's like an hour's worth of content there. Um, I can use this time to talk about the Suicide Squad again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. Go for it. This is, it's been a good week for watching great movies that have just got charm and heart and likeable characters. And I know I've talked about it on the uh, the show a couple of months back, but um, I am so thoroughly impressed by The Suicide Squad 2021 by James Gunn. <laughs> <laughs> um, when, I, when I watched it at the cinema, I really enjoyed it. 
um, it, it didn't have quite the... It didn't feel like the highs or the experimentalness of Guardians of the Galaxy, but it was like clearly a, a, a James Gunn film. But the more I've thought about it, and the more I've listened to other people talking about it, and, and then going back and, and re-watching it, it has cemented it firmly in just one of my favourite films of, of the decade. I'm counting 2021 as decade, because 2020 was a dead year and everything got bumped back. Um, it's it's sensationally good from from a character perspective more than anything. It just the the heart that went into this film, and we all know James Gunn is just really good at ensemble character pieces like Joss Whedon, and just giving them a a life and a grounding. And uh, it's been really interesting because there's there's one particular scene. There's in in both this and Suicide Squad 2016. There's a bar scene, and both of them are like the best moments in those films but one is radically superior to the other. And I thought it was just me uh, that really, really enjoyed this. It, it's not even a one-minute scene. Well, it maybe it's two minutes. There's about a minute of dialogue and then 30 seconds of just a, a montage scene of them all at the bar, just enjoying what may be their last night on Earth. Mm. And just classic James Gunn knows how to sort of do set up the characters and then let them breathe without dialogue and a choice of music. And, um, yeah, it was my favourite section, just the, the musical montage, when I first watched it, and it's been sort of playing in my head on loop and on loop and on loop. And I was tracking down the uh, the song. Uh, it's called uh, Can't Sleep by Kay, uh, Kay Flay. And I was scrolling down the comments while listening to it, and so many of the commenters are just like, this is the best scene in the movie. I've loved K-Fly for and this is the perfect marrying. I love this scene. It's so good to see the characters doing this. Did you notice this? Did you notice this? Um, one in particular that really got me was like, this reminds me of the time I went to the club or, and, and there was this guy I knew from high school who was so shy and reserved. And then I came back and I saw him like dancing in a ring with all these people, just letting all of his inhibitions go. And then I just sort of let myself go. And it's like, yes, yes, that is it exactly. That captures the scene of it. It's, I don't know why it speaks to me so much, but it's just such a, a fantastic scene um, of just watching these characters at play. And I love it. And I then had to then obviously track down the CD uh, <laughs> of uh, of K Flay so I could have it in the collection, which then turned out that that's been deleted. It's some weird collector's item now. So if you want to pay, you know, minimum of seventy five pounds or maximum of four hundred pounds for a CD that came Jesus. out seven years ago, I managed to get one. Um, fortunately, for about twenty six pounds, I think with uh, with shipping bolted on, and uh, hopefully that should be in the next fortnight. But um, yeah, yeah. So now I'm just really into this uh, hip hop star from the last decade, purely because of one short montage scene from a James Gunn film. But yeah, I yeah uh, I, I really can't sing Suicide Squad's praises enough, just for the the character work and the interplay between them all. And I love this film, and I want to watch it again immediately <laughs> whenever i'm not watching it i'm thinking about how soon until i can watch it again and who who do i know in the immediate area or back at university that would watch this movie with me so we can then talk about it together um <laughs> i might even drag my ex because she loves peter capaldi and uh, and he's one of the villains in it so it's like i i could yeah i could spend an evening with my ex re-watching this movie <laughs> exploiting her love of peter capaldi in order to do so <laughs> it's uh it, Good as Spider-Man Far From Home is, uh, No Way Home is, and make no mistake, I'm not just saying this from a, oh, the keys were jangled, this really tickled my nostalgia uh, jangly bits. Spider-Man No Way Home is a phenomenal piece of character writing, absolutely perfect in that regard. It gets its characters. Um, but Su The Suicide Squad is probably my favourite film of this year, after Deathstalker 2. After this talk to, <laughs> I don't know if that counts. <laughs> I think it counts. I found it last year, so it counts. Um, so yeah, I, I'm really excited for you to watch the Suicide Squad uh, and then let it sink in, and then probably rewatch it and then talk to you at great length because, yeah, I I I just I love these characters <laughs> all all apart from Harley Quinn, but even she gets one or two jokes in there. Uh, she slows the film down to an absolute crawl and you can tell she was sort of forced in there because she's got her own side plot essentially but um, yeah uh, I, I know I'm sort of just nonsensically jabbering on again and again saying I love this movie uh, but I, I don't want to spoil any of it 
<laughs> and I do feel a, a proper deep dive is needed into it at some point down the line because it's just exceptionally good. It's it's by far James Gunn's best film in, in sort of the mainstream. Far and away the best DC movie since Dark Knight, and I much prefer it to The Dark Knight. Uh, Batman Returns levels of brilliance. Oh, okay. Mm. Um, I may be overselling it a bit. Like I say, the first watch I thoroughly enjoyed it, but it just, it, it just, it won't move my head. I just can't stop thinking about this movie and these characters <laughs> and, and just everything. It's it's just so good. <laughs> You're wearing the John Cena merch and all sorts. Oh yeah, essentially, I'm waiting for the Peacemaker series to come out. I'm on tenterhooks. It's the only <laughs> bit of television I'm looking forward to this year. Yeah, we'll do that definitely. Um, we'll find a an event or an occasion for which to. When's the um, Suicide Squad kills the Justice League? When's that out? Is that out this year? Oh, uh, probably summer, if not autumn. I don't know with games anymore because they they tend to say it'll be out here and then they push it back at least nine months. Let's have a look. League versus Suicide Squad game. It just says uh, set to be released in twenty twenty two, from mm. what I can see. Um, Probably near Christmas. Then. But yeah, that I will will do it then. Whenever uh, whenever that is, and it'll be a good tie in for for that release. Um, and uh, it'll help the algorithm. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully. Uh, hopefully, hopefully yeah. If not, we'll have to cover the other Suicide Squad movie as well, just so we can go, oh, God. Well, we'll, oh, do, actually, we'll do both. We could anyway. have a Suicide Squad one, because there's two animated features as well. Uh, there's, oh. Um, oh, God damn it, what is it? Uh, Assault on Arkham, which is great. It's a, That's a really good movie. And then Road to Hell, which... Uh, I don't know if you know much about the DC animated universe but that's essentially was one big interconnected universe um and that does a really good job of tying up a particular aspect of flashpoint from i don't know it probably would have been about eight years previously mm. and uh, it's a pretty mediocre film until you realize what the actual plot is and it's like oh oh wow that's that's really interesting it doesn't exactly elevate the film but I like this choice. Yes, very good. So there's four Suicide Squad movies we could potentially review there. Hmm. Yeah. Oh well. You just uh, you just set out a month for us there, Matt. So we'll we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll definitely get on that. Suicidal uh, September. Suicidal September. <laughs> As every <laughs> September is. Um, yeah. Awesome. Well, we'll leave it there for this uh, very first episode of the very f- of the very. Good God, what I'm even saying. Of the very first year, the 2022. Very first year of this new year is what I meant. Um, yes, got lots hopefully coming over the uh, next couple of weeks. We're starting out with Twilight, which will be... Oh, oh, geez, it's it's be on next. Netflix. I don't have to buy them. Oh, hooray. I'm probably going to buy them, but they're on <laughs> Netflix. Um, I don't mind watching them because it's been a long time coming. It's been, you know, literally... Um, Every, well, my sister uh, went through a period with them, enjoying them, and my ex um, uh, used to watch them a lot. So it's like, you know, there are a lot of people in my life that have, have watched these films religiously. So I am kind of curious to to see um, them. Um, oh, you're in for a treat. Well, I mean, that's the main problem, really, isn't it? It's like if they turn into these 10-hour kind of massive <laughs> reviews <laughs> that we just have to do because we're just masochists and it's like no we need to we need to go through this scene with a fine tooth comb because of how ridiculous you know trying to dig through all these plot holes and things and just get increasingly <laughs> incensed with every new one it's uh it's going to turn into one of those so it, it is yes it's essentially going to be batman forever but spaced over five movies yeah oh transformers all over again so. um no nothing's going to be quite as bad as transformers oh well i mean maybe we can shave an hour off then in that case yeah good <laughs> oh, <laughs> luck yeah good luck it's gonna be fun um so yes keep an eye out for that thank you guys for spending this time with us it's always appreciated take care farewell and nil uh, my brain today and until nil. next time that's what i was gonna say goodbye adios Thank you.